Well, hey, this is Chase, and in today's video, uh, I was just inspired to share some um, techniques I use to make really cool um, images for uh, YouTube video thumbnails or Facebook posts or blog posts where you need a nice graphic image. And I'm going to show you using Keynote. So I have my uh, program chooser and I'm on a Mac um, and uh, I have the latest operating system and all that good stuff and so this is the latest version of Keynote so let's uh, let me show you what the result will be so as you see here I have a nice graphic it's got some interesting uh, things going on it's kind of a speech bubble it's got my name we got a reversed uh, graduated grad or a gradient really we have a screenshot in the background, and uh, if I zoom in, let's go up here. Um, this is going to be a thumbnail for a YouTube video. So I want to point out that when they, when someone does a search for a video, that they're going to, you know, that this is the keyword search they're going to uh, search for. Now, I also have myself as a graphic or a picture, but it's, it's it's got a refined edge it's it's the background has been uh taken out okay so i'll show you how to do all that and so this is the end result <clears throat> if i look at it back in 100 percent. so let's start with <clears throat> what i have which is a um <clears throat> pardon me a black background and of course i can change that at any time and then i have this image that i took with uh, my iphone now, as you move things around, you'll always you'll notice the yellow lines, and and that means you've centered something. And in this uh, vertical line, it means I've centered it vertical, uh, actually from left to right. And then if I move it up, I can center it right in the center. So those I use those yellow lines a lot, and uh, the yellow lines just automatically appear whenever you are trying to center something. And it just makes it really nice to center things. So um, our goal is to do this, and let's start with this. So the first thing you can do <clears throat> is, if you have a nice image and you want to get rid of the background, it's uh, really cool and easy to do. And um, basically, you will go to the Format menu of Keynote and click on that. Now, if you're not clicked on the image, you need to click once on the image. And when... When you see that, let me see, uh, it, the, the dot doesn't get larger, but it, you can see a little um, endpoint on that uh, picture. And, and it's also up at the top, okay? So let's just zoom back out. And I'll just move it to 100%, okay? And um, you can zoom in and move around. I'm using a trackpad on a MacBook Pro, so I can move things around, just sliding my fingers around on the uh, trackpad. Um, so now I have the image selected, and I will. Um, there's several sub menus, and you may not always be on the right one. So you just kind of have to click through style or image or arrange. Now the one I want to be on is image, and there's two really cool features. But I want the instant alpha, and as the little pop-up shows, it makes part of an image transparent. So it's easiest if it's like white or of a solid color. And the background that I picked was somewhere in my house. I'm not sure what this is up here, but I got mostly a background that was white and that's all I really needed. And it's not perfectly white. So you get this little box in here and down at the bottom, it says click a color to make it transparent. Transparent means go away. And drag to make similar colors transparent. And you can always reset it if you need to start over. Okay, so what that means is you just kind of position it here and then click. And you see, as I drag, it's just like, oh, you want all these similar colors. Now, you don't have to do it in one swoop. And in fact, you can see the uh, circle is going into my face. So I've done it too much. So I can just back it out. And that, amazingly, so that circle is 25%. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but... I just don't want to make that circle go into my face because then it starts doing that, okay? <clears throat> but I'll just stop right there because it's gotten most of it just right off the bat, okay? So then you're left with this gray area, and there's a little bit up here, and this little uh, 
pointer right in the center is right where you're selecting and it magnifies it so you could get right in there but i'm not going to worry about that that's going to be fine because my background is going to be white and this area will blend in but i'll just go down here and just click in there and there i've gotten it and uh, i have a little circle that says 10 percent but whatever when i release boom it's gotten it now technically i have you know my glasses are reflecting or bending in the light so if i wanted to i could zoom in and just get that right there it doesn't eh, it's okay we may well, i may undo it and you can do command z let me just do a smaller amount now that looks kind of weird but um i'm gonna just undo it because in in this situation it's gonna just blend in fine so uh, let me just try over here and see if this is any better. And I got that little dot right in the center and I'm going up. I think it's going to just be kind of a hard edge and then it's not going to get this corner. So I'll undo that as well. This will be fine. So I'm going to just click done. And now what I have as I click off the image is I have a, an image of myself that's transparent in the background. The white is pretty much gone. Okay. So I'll just put it over over here. Now, when you have this uh, format palette open, it crops in on your image somewhat. So sometimes I check that off. And now I'm at 100%. And you can change your percentage, 75. You can also um, spread your fingers apart and move them in together when you're on the image and zoom in like that on a trackpad, on your MacBook Pro or something with a trackpad, okay? So that's my image, okay? So I'll, you can, this is the dimensions, I should say, of the entire image. And then I can move myself like right over here, okay? And so now let's look at our background because we want kind of a gradated background. So let's do it that. Um, you don't need to click on anything. Just go to format and it brings up kind of the slide layout when you're on format and nothing is checked or nothing is clicked. If I click on the image, the menu changes because I clicked on the image and the menu that relates to images pops up. So just un un unclick everything. Don't make sure, just make sure you're not clicked on anything. And we see now the slide layout. And instead of a color fill, I want to do a gradient fill. And that one's pretty cool. Now you can change the colors really easily. Um, let's say if I wanted red. Actually, that look, doesn't look too bad, does it? Um, and then you can also, by flipping the or clicking on that, it'll switch. Okay. Which one do I like? I like them both, but I think I'll go... I think I'll go with this one, okay? Actually, you know what? Well, the, I'm going to put a white background in the background there, but you can see that that doesn't quite... It's, it's close, but I got a little white around my hair, but it's going to be fine. Down here, it looks really good. So, um, the next thing I need is, uh, you can do it a couple different ways, but I may want to get a background. I'm going to use Google Chrome. Whoops, let's bring that up. And let's say, um, let's see, I'm going to do a search. Maybe I'm going to make a, a, a graphic for a specific search. Um, how to use Keynote. Okay, on MacBook Pro. Yeah, so I like that. So um, I'll take this uh, keyword phrase and maybe I was going to um, do that anyways. Okay, let's see if there's any other longer. No, nope, that's pretty good. Okay, so that will be the keyword phrase I put in the background. So I've copied that. But now I want to use this as my background. Okay. So on a Mac, you can take a screenshot of a section of a program by choosing Command, Shift, and the number 4. And what you get is this crosshairs. And then the crosshairs allows you to click and drag. And I'm getting right in the corner. Now I'm clicking and dragging. I want this darker gray to be the background. And I'm just going to come down. And this will be plenty big. But I'm going to make sure I have it, you know, a little bit to the right here. Plenty, plenty of room. 
But I want this I want this graphic up here. I want that search in the uh, picture. And I want all this content here. So I'm just going to come down. And all I'm doing is holding down with my thumb and then dragging around with my forefinger. And I can move this around. And when I get it set, I just release with my thumb. Okay, so I'll release. And it's taken a screenshot. If I go to my finder, actually I need to bring it up. Um, that'll be on my desktop and it'll be a screenshot. Okay. So when you do that, when you do command shift three or four, three will take a picture of the entire screen. Four will just take this screenshot, which I have uh, taken. So this is a screenshot. And it's exactly what I wanted. I got the Google logo. I got the keyword phrase. I got the search button. Um, and some content here. So, um, and I just hit the space bar to bring that up. So you can hit the space bar and then hit the space bar and it'll go down. So I just wanted to show you that, that image. Now, it always saves it with the file name screenshot. And then it puts the date and the time. Okay. So that's fine. Uh, let's switch over to Keynote. Let's switch back to Finder. Because all I have to do is drag this onto the image of Keynote. And I can just drop it. Boom. Okay. So the, the interesting thing is when you drop a pasted graphic on onto Keynote, it puts it on the top. Kind of like a deck of cards. This image is now on the top over me. And I, I don't want that. And I could have done this first uh, and then copied my image. Uh, and there's a couple other things you can do. Um, I could, uh, I'll do this a couple ways. Let's do, let's say I want my image here. I want this on top. Well, I can just copy it and delete it. So it's like a deck of cards. It's below this top layer, but it's in memory. And if I paste, boom, it's now on top. So that's pretty darn cool. Okay. So I'll just move that over. And now I can click on this image. And I'm not sure exactly where I want it. Actually, I need to get rid of the format menu. So that I can see the edge of the uh, image. So I just want, I want the blue logo there or the search icon. And I think that's going to be pretty good because, well, a little bit more over. And you see the yellow line is showing me that it's, you know, perfectly uh, centered top to bottom. And I think that's pretty darn good. Okay. So now I have my um, background or my screenshot image and I can just hit undo to move it and it'll go right back. But I'm, I can show you that that's what I'm talking about and then just undo that move. Okay. I'll click here. Now I don't have any selected, anything selected. I can click on myself and just move myself over. And I'll just put the corner right there. Now, technically, and we might even play with this. My shoulder is kind of ending and it's cut off because my iPhone didn't capture that. And maybe I want to bring this line over. So what I could do there is um, I could change... We'll see if this will work. If I change the perspective, it's not going to be long enough. But you know what I could do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the edge just like that. I'm going to use my arrow keys just to, just to very fine move that and put it right there. Okay. Now what I can do is this background image is really not... It's not a person, so I can distort it. I'm going to go back to the format menu. And I'm going to go to arrange because you can change the size of the image. And right now, constrained proportions means it'll stay in proportion. The, the height and the width stay in proportion. Okay, But if I uncheck that, now I can stretch the image. So click on it. Now, this dot is the image behind me. It's not me. And it's I've un I've not constrained the proportion, so watch I can just stretch this up, and that's exactly what I want. I'm going to get rid of the format menu. You need to bring it up just a little bit more, and you can actually go off the screen, and you can kind of see a ghosting. 
as you pull that image out of the frame, you can kind of see it, but I just want it right there, okay? Now, I can even bring in these sides because I've lost my little Google search thing, so I can bring this in just like that. I'm going to bring this down just a tiny bit. Yeah, right there, okay? So now I have my graphic of myself over this uh, screenshot, basically. If I click out in the gray or anywhere over here, everything deselects, and that's looking pretty good. So now what I want is a shape. I want a speech bubble, okay? So you can go to your shapes, and there's actually several different color variations, and you can just use your trackpad and swipe and get different colors. And uh, I'm going to make it uh, a gradated color. These are all solid, although that is a gradated gray. And these are solid. So, I don't know, maybe the gradation will help. So maybe I'll just use this um, speech bubble right here. So you can just drag it off, and you instantly get a speech bubble. And it's going the wrong way, but I'll show you how to fix that. And um, I could have done one that's more square. Or, yeah, here's one that's more square. Let me, I'm going to change my the idea and delete that one. So I'll select it and hit the delete key. Come back up to the shapes. And grab, I'll just drag out the square one. Okay. Because it'll just make it easier for the text. Now, um, you can drag this around. Just make sure you select it. And then you're somewhere in the graphic. So I'm in the top left corner. I can drag it around. Or if I'm in the middle, whatever. But I, I can't move it if I don't select it. Okay. And when I draw the square, you can actually select multiple elements. So if I had this, I'll just duplicate this. If you had two speech bubbles and you want to select them both, just draw a square. And as soon as it touches one, it selects it. And, it, and you can select both of them just really easily by drawing a box over both of them. And if you had three or ten, or I can select all of these items by drawing that box. And you can see the dots over everything that I've selected. Okay, so that's just another little tip. I'll get rid of that speech bubble, and let's just kind of size it. I want to drag the bottom corner, and the bottom corner will allow me to change the height and the width independently so that's pretty cool and I'm gonna just go something like that just kind of it's pretty good so um, let's go ahead and let's move this uh, where the speech bubble is now there's a uh, or where the direction there's a little green dot there and what I can do is grab that green dot and move this and then it'll come over and then I could just go something like that Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, and I always kind of uncheck things uh, when I'm doing this, you know. Uh, so that looks good. And I'm going to click once here. I'm going to go to the format menu because I want to change the style. I want to have a gradient. And it is a gradient, but now it's uh, white and gray. Okay, so your gradient is right here. And you can change the gradient from top to bottom to left to right or corner to corner all these things so and if you make a mistake you can just undo 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 Oop. Uh, let's just let me bring that back uh, let's do uh, I don't know what happened so let's just bring this back over okay like so you could just I could do like that so click once now, my gradient, uh, gradient, I would like to have red at the top because it's going to be opposite of the background. So I'll choose red at the top and black at the bottom. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right. And, of course, if you don't like this, you can have a straight color. Um, there's a lot of options here. Um, so I won't go into these, but there's some cool things there. And uh, you can also change the angle of the gradient. Um, now I'm on the background. As you can see, I didn't choose what I was selecting, so I'm on the background. 
let me undo that and click on the graphic and then you can change if you wanted to you could change the gradient kind of interesting isn't it I think I'll have it do something like that I like that okay so it's gradating from red in the corner down to black here. And I, I kind of like that. Now my la last thing is I want to have text in this box area. So what I'll do is just click the text. And it brings in a text uh, element. Okay. And you, just like dragging everything else, you have to be on it. And then you can drag it around. And of course you're going to get the yellow lines signifying that it's uh, somehow centered. Uh, but I can just, um, I can center it that way horizontally. Uh, and then what I want to do is just type in, um, all you have to do is click once actually, and then type how to, and I think I'll capitalize that to use Keynote on MacBook Pro. Okay, now it's gone off. That's okay. I can fix all that. So I'm going to drag it over here. Now what it has is an endpoint, and you can just drag that kind of down or in. Do you see I'm dragging down and then in? Okay. So now I have it, and it's kind of uh, dynamically going to. Now I'm just doing horizontal. Um, it'll the words will flow in there dynamically. However, they have to stay in the box. And so I can play with that however I want. Obviously, that's a need to be bigger. Now, if you deselect everything, just make sure you select on the text. Now, there's a nice speedy way to do that, the size of the font. You can actually go to text and you can search for it. Right now, it's 32. But I'm just going to leave my mouse over here and I'm going to hit the command and the plus button. And you can see I'm going to 37, 38, 39, 40. And I find this is faster than coming over here and trying to guess what it is. Okay. So um, I'm just going to keep refining that. And let's do Command Plus. I need to move it to the side more. So really what I, what I could do is make sure the box left to right is just right maybe like that and then let's see if i can increase it command plus okay and uh, maybe i just bring that down a little bit okay so that is kind of a speech bubble and i kind of like that now you may not like exactly what i've done but i'm showing you a variety of things now, the format's coming up because I have nothing selected. So it's just showing me the elements for the background. And you can get rid of that. Now I'm looking at the uh, slide at 82%. If you want to see it at 100%, you can change it there. Okay, so that's nice and big. And then I have one more text element that I'm going to bring down here. And this one I want to center. So I'll just keep it lined up with that yellow line to center it right under the text and just go by chase swift okay now i can recenter that by dragging it left and then boom and then i could can do apple plus or command plus now it is uh justified to the left so it moves off so really i can get it the right size okay and then i can move it and center it and I'll probably bring it up like that. Okay. So there we have it. So now we have a speech bubble. And we have a graded background. We have a text element. Uh, and there's so much more you can do. Um, you can. Um, well let's just pretend that this is the bottom. I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to go under the format menu. Because there are some things that you can do with like reflections and it's really cool so if this was the bottom element you could imagine that this is on the bottom and let's pretend this is a glossy red background there would be a reflection and that's what that does and you can change the uh, reflection right there kind of the intensity and I think this is the opacity of the whole element so 
I like it at 100%, but I like, if I want that mirrored effect, I want it like that. So I want it really intense. Maybe I'll bring it down just a bit. Because the Y is, the Y would dissipate in the reflection. So there it is. That's kind of neat. And now I can move that down just like that. All right. Click on the format menu to get rid of the menu. And now you can see everything. If you need to change the, um, the uh, per percentage of zoom. That, now I have everything. And you can see that the, the screenshot is going off the edge. That's fine. What would just show is in, inside here. And you can even hit play. And it'll fill the screen with your image. And that looks pretty darn good. There's maybe a slight... Now, my mouse is gone but because uh, I'm in play mode on Kino. There's a slight white line on my sh shoulder, but I don't mind that too much. Um, so I'll hit escape. Because um, really, you only see that when it's really enlarged. So I would say uh, that's pretty darn good. And uh, some, there's some a lot of other things you could do. Uh, let me just show that you could highlight. I'm going to just highlight the uh, element or that box, that speech bubble. And you could put a drop shadow on that. So I'm going to go to, I forget where it is. I think it's style. I had it. And it already has a drop shadow, actually. But what I could do is bring it offset. And I'm going to exaggerate it. So that's a shadow. And it's uh, being cast. It's a drop shadow. So if I want to bring that down... And then I want to, well, let me let me bring it so you can really see this. I'm going to bring it off, and then I'm going to blur it so that it gets kind of ghosty, right? Kind of blurs at the edges. I kind of like what's happening right in here. I like what's happening here. It's a floating element. And I really, I don't want to change the angle. And there's so much you can do here, by the way. Um, you can change the angle. So where is that shadow going to be? And I think I like it. Just right about there. So I can see this edge is casting a shadow. And this is getting good. You know, there's a nice shadow across there. Boom. That is looking pretty darn nice. And of course, if I reverse the color of the background, the shadow doesn't work so much. So I like the, uh, the black on the top. And that is looking good. I'm going to click on Format so I can see my image. Now the last part, I almost forgot this, was to put a little um, oblong circle around this. So to do that, I'm going to go to the shape. And it doesn't really matter what color I use. And I'm just swiping between all these different uh, options. But I'll use the round circle. So I just click and I get a round circle. Now I want to get rid of the red inside. And making sure that I'm st on style under the format menu. <clears throat> all I want to do is choose no fill. So now I get a little round circle, but the uh, line around it needs to be thicker. And so that is, I think, oh, that's under border right here. So I want it to be a line. Okay, so now it's black. And I want to use a color. So there's the color picker, and I want this nice red. Okay, so now as you drag this, it'll get oblong. And then you can also squeeze it from the top. So now I want to position it. And I can actually position it off the screen. Um, I'm going to bring it back in a little bit. So I'll bring it back there. And bring it up a little bit there. And move it a little bit to the side so we can see the Google logo. And then shorten it up. Oops, I need to grab right in the center there. Now I'll move it over, and I think that'll be just about right. I can make it just a tad bigger. And then I can resize it right on the center there. And a little bit of it can go off the top. That's okay. And it just will give a nice swoosh uh, to that. And if we look at it full screen, okay, so a nice red logo or a circle up at the top. And uh, pretty awesome. So that is how to do all of this. Um, and there are certain parts that you'll use for different uh, sections on Keynote. But I've gone through a number of things. I've gone through masking out an image, uh, pasting in a background, 
uh, putting a, a gradient background, adding a text box, adding a speech bubble, adding some text with reflection. So that really covers. There is more to do, but that pretty well will take care of anything you might have um, to do with Keynote. So thanks for watching this video. Have a great day and look to uh, like my video if you like it, but also look to subscribe because I'll do more videos on the use of Keynote in the future. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye for now.